Okay. So now that we have seen several examples of stable matching and hopefully understand them better, let's go back to our fundamental problem that we were uh, starting out with, right? So remember the problem was that you had a community of N men and N women, and we were trying to think of like, what is a good way of pairing them up in the sense that we want to have a matching involving one man and one woman. So what's a good way of like uh, pairing them up? Right. So there are several questions that naturally come up. Right. One such question is that given preference structure, so given the information that we have about the community, about how each man ranks the different woman and how each of the woman ranks the different man, um, is there a way of always being certain of finding a stable matching system? Right. That's one question. Uh, and even more fundamentally, uh, and do we actually know whether a stable division always exists for the matching problem, right? So remember that the answer for generally uh, kind of like pairing up things is like not necessarily yes, because we saw an example in the roommate problem where actually a stable division does not exist, right? But going back to this uh, matching problem involving the men and the women, is there a guarantee that a stable division always exists? And if so, how do we go about finding such a stable matching system? So in order to answer these questions, we are going to uh, look into this algorithm called the gale shapley algorithm. And the answer is going to be that, yes, that uh, we can be sure that a stable division always exists for this matching problem involving the men and the women. And the gale shapley algorithm is one way of actually finding that stable matching system. Another question that comes around is that, uh, can we be certain that there is only one stable matching system? Uh, we already know the answer to this question and the answer is no, right? We have already seen examples before where you have got uh, for this uh, pairing problem that there are actually more than one stable matching system, right? So that is something to keep in mind. So let's take a deeper look at this Gale Shapley algorithm. So uh, it's actually an algorithm in the sense that it's a recipe, right? And it involves several stages. So in the first stage, every man, is going to turn to the woman who is first on his list and proposes to her, okay? So that's the first part of the first stage. Now, what are the women uh, going to do with those proposals? So every woman who receives more than one proposal selects her favorite from among those who have proposed to her, right? And tells the others that she will never marry them. So therefore she rejects the others. Now, it is not the case that the uh the woman has kind of like uh, kind of like decided to go that this is my final choice what that does is that uh, every man who is not rejected is actually put on a waiting list of the woman to whom he proposed so only at the end of the algorithm will the final pairing happen right now if uh if you are a man and you have uh, kind of like proposed to a woman and she has not rejected you she is going to be you are going to be put on the waiting list okay now, what happens in stage two, uh, every man who was rejected in the first stage turns to the woman who is second on his list and proposes to her. Remember, in the first stage, every man had proposed to the basically the person who was the first on that list, right? Okay. Uh, what about the woman? So again, the same as in the first stage, every woman who receives more than one proposal including any proposals that she had kept in the waiting list in the first stage, selects her favorite from among those, right? And puts him on her waiting list and informs the others that they are rejected. And now the Gale algorithm uh, procedure is going to call, continue in the following way. So in the third stage, again, kind of like every man who is rejected, and this might be either you would be rejected for the first time or the second time, is going to kind of like turn to the woman who is next on, a, uh, on his list and then going to propose, right? And similarly, the woman is going to kind of like act exactly before. So if you have more than one proposals, you are going to only keep the your favorite in the waiting list and reject others, right? And you're going to, we are going to keep on uh, following this procedure till the point as no man is rejected, right? And uh, at that stage, every man on the waiting list becomes uh, the partner, right? And the procedure is terminated. So this is how the Gale Shapley algorithm works. But let's take a more concrete example just to fix the ideas, right? So as before, we have got uh, four men and four women, right? So the uh, alphabet letters, which are small, right? So this uh, small a, small b, small c, small d, these are the men. And capital A, capital B, capital C, and capital D, these are the women. And if you remember, this is how the preference rankings were specified. Right. So, for example, on the left hand side, what you are seeing, the first uh, column is saying that uh, Miss A ranks Mr. D as the best option. 
Mr. C as the second best option, Mr. A as the third best option, and Mr. B as the fourth best option, right? So that's how you interpret this thing. And the men's preferences are specified on the uh, right hand side. So for example, if we are looking at Mr. C's preference, so Mr. C ranks Miss B as the best uh, ranked uh, woman, and Miss A as the second best, Miss C as the third best, and Miss D as the fourth best. This is how you interpret, right? Recall that we have discussed this before. So let's see how the Gale Shapley algorithm works on in this case. So remember that in the first stage, the idea is that every man is going to uh, propose to the woman on top of his list, right? So that means that Mr. A is going to propose to Miss A, Mr. B is going to propose to Miss A, uh, Mr. C is going to propose to Miss B, and Miss, uh, Mr. D is going to propose to Miss D. So we can write that here. So we have got that uh, these are the, from the women's perspectives, right? Uh, uh, Miss A has received proposals from Mr. A and Mr. B. Miss B has received proposals from Mr. C. Uh, Miss C has not yet received any proposal. And Miss D has received a proposal from uh, uh, Mr. D, right? Okay. So if you have received only one proposal, then you are going to put that in the waiting list. If you have received more than one proposal, you can only put one of these two names in the waiting list and the kind of like the second one you have to reject, right? So let's see from Miss A's perspective, what is she going to do? So she have received proposals from Mr. A and Mr. B. We can go back and see her preferences, right? So she ranks uh, Mr. A as third and Mr. B as fourth. So basically she's going to keep the Mr. A's proposal in the waiting list and she's going to reject Mr. B's proposal, right? So this B's proposal is rejected and we are going to denote that by putting a star here, right? So basically at the end of the first stage, what has happened is that uh, Miss A has Mr. A's proposal uh, in the waiting list. Miss B has Mr. C's proposal in the waiting list. Uh, Miss D has Mr. D's proposal in the waiting list and the proposal by Mr. B to Miss a has been rejected, right? That is the first stage. In the second stage, what's going to happen is that the person whose proposal was rejected, so this is Mr. B, he is going to actually go and propose to the second person in his list, right? So if we go back there, the second person is Miss D, right? So Mr. B at this point is going to go and propose to Miss D, okay? So we write that here uh, in the sense that now basically uh, Miss A has Mr. D's proposal in the waiting list, Miss B has Mr. C's, uh, C still does not have any proposal, but now Ms. D has two proposals to consider, right? So one from Mr. D from previous round, which was in the waiting list, and the second proposal that she has just now received from Mr. B, right? So how does Ms. D compare these two proposals from Mr. D and Mr. B? So let's look at that. So Ms. D thinks that uh, uh, Mr. B is the second best that could have been proposed to her and Mr. D is the fourth, right? So she is going to rank basically uh, B's proposal above D's proposal, right? So in that case that she is going to reject uh, Mr. D's proposal. So then therefore in the waiting list, Mr. B's proposal is going to go and D's proposal is going to be rejected, okay? So that means that in the third stage, we have got Mr. D who has to come out and actually make a proposal, right? So uh, Mr. D is going to now propose to the second best a uh, woman in his ranking, right? So that is going to be Miss B, right? So now we have got basically uh, Miss B therefore has two proposals to consider. So from before the proposal from C and now the proposal from D, right? So again, we go to uh, Miss B's ranking and see that uh, how does she rank these two proposals? So we can see that uh, she ranks Mr. C's proposal as fourth, Mr. D's proposal as two. And so therefore she's going to reject uh, the proposal from Mr. C and she's going to keep the proposal from Mr. D in the waiting list, right? So now we have got basically Mr. C in the next stage is going to have to make the proposal, right? Uh, so if we go back, so the second option is to kind of like propose to Miss A, right? So that's where you have it. Now A, Miss A has now two proposals from A and C, right? Uh, so in this case, what is Miss A going to do? So if she looks at A and C, uh, the comparison is that C is better than A, right? So for her, uh, so she's going to reject Mr. A's proposal, right? So that means that Mr. A has to kind of like go out and make the proposal next, right? 
And Mr. A's second proposal is to uh, propose to B. So she does it, uh, sorry, he does it. And now again, Ms. B has two things, right? So proposal from Mr. D and Mr. A to consider, right? So how does B rank A and D? So we can see that B ranks D over A. So she rejects Mr. A's proposal, right? And therefore, uh, again, Mr. A has to go out and make another proposal. So that is the third proposal that he's making and he makes it to C, right? And therefore here we have this thing. And now basically all of the kind of like, uh, there's a uh, there's a coupling that has happened between a man and a woman, like this pairing has now complete. And this is where uh, there's no more rejection at this stage, right? Because none of the women have more than one proposals, right? And so therefore this is uh, where the algorithm terminates, right? So this is the matching that has emerged. So Miss A is matched with uh, Mr. C, Miss B is matched with Mr. D, Miss C is matched with Mr. A, and Miss T is matched with Mr. B, right? Okay. So... Uh, there are two interesting things here, right? One is that, you know, you may have this question that, uh, okay, can this be the case that this algorithm will kind of like, you know, and it go on for forever, right? Because it seems that, you know, you have this proposal where, you know, you are being put on the waiting list and then after some point you may be rejected. And then again, so you might think fear that, you know, this might be kind of like an infinite loop, right? However, one can show mathematically that that is not the case. Uh, and in fact, one can show that the algorithm terminates after a finite number of steps. And it's also possible mathematically to find out what is the maximum number of steps in which the gale shapley algorithm will terminate as a function of the number of men and women, right? So that is something that is a more mathematical detail. We are going to skip that here, but we are just going to note down this as a property, right? But more importantly for us, the gale shapley algorithm has this property that not only is it going to terminate after a finite number of steps, but it's going to terminate in a matching system, which is stable, right? So you can verify here, as an exercise that this matching that we have discussed at the end of stage six uh, in the context of this preference ranking that it is actually a stable matching. And this is not just true for this example. This is something, a result that is true more generally, which is that uh, always uh, the gale shapley algorithm in this kind of situation is always going to kind of give you a matching which is stable, right? So that's a, that's a general mathematical property that one can show.